this away. Okay, well, one of the obvious culprits is aspirin. To absorb vitamin B12, and as you well know, we need intrinsic factor, a protein made by cells in the stomach. Mm -hmm. If the cells in the stomach are not working right, you don't make intrinsic factor, you can't absorb B12. It could be in your food, you can't get it into your bloodstream. Aspirin, of course, can irritate the stomach lining, produce atrophy and erosions. That's a problem. It's a very commonly used medication, of course. And, and by the way, we should we hasten to add here, but we're not telling people to stop taking medications they need, right? But just to recognize this could cause B12 deficiency. A very common problem in this country, heartburn or so-called GERD, ulcers, all of the medications used to reduce stomach acid, in particular the proton pump inhibitors. You don't make enough stomach acid, you can't absorb B12. And then the, the third one's a bit of a surprise. It's a popular and, and very effective drug for diabetes called metformin or glucophage, widely prescribed, a very good drug, but it seems to cause B12 deficiency. We're actually not exactly sure how or why. It probably has something to do with effects on the intestine and absorption there. But these are commonly used, and any one of these, or a combination, could be a reason for B12 deficiency. Now, there's some vitamins that we often give folks that will also interfere with vitamin B12 absorption. And that's not to dissuade you from taking these, which would be aware of them, because it might mean you're more at risk for it, and if you don't mind, cover them. Yes, well, actually, probably the single biggest thing to say about vitamins is folate. B12 and folate work together, and the real issue with folic acid is if you have enough folic acid, it will mask the effects of B12 deficiency that we ordinarily would see on a blood test. So your blood test will look fine. The problem is it will not fix the effects of B12 deficiency on the nervous system. So one of the things that can happen if you get lots of folate, either in your diet or from a supplement, is B12 deficiency can progress all the way up to effects on the brain causing a dementia syndrome that, as noted, can actually mimic Alzheimer's. And the problem with that is there is a point at which B12 deficiency is no longer fully reversible. You don't find it within the first months to couple of years and fix it. Some of those effects on cognition can persist. So a real concern that folate at times may mask B12 deficiency. Let me just say naturally occurring folate in foods, though, won't do that because your body won't absorb it. It's the fortified foods. Generally, that's the issue. We're well talking about 1,000 units a day, they yeah. big doses. And I guess just across the board, if you have dementia in your family, B12 ought to be something that's checked in that person. Okay, next reason, again, you can help us with this, you can don the purple gloves. Uh, age is a major risk factor for B12 deficiency, and it has to do with uh, uh, several factors. And if you don't mind covering them, and I've got some nice anatomy to go along yeah, with Yes, so the big thing that happens as we age to our stomach is the cells in our stomach change, and we don't secrete as much stomach acid. Mm -hmm. Now, stomach acid is a key part of how we break off B12 from animal proteins and absorbed it. Dr. Katz talked about intrinsic factor. The other key piece that has to work 100% is your body's uh, stomach acid juices mm -hmm. have to be functioning enough so that they can physically unlock B12 from the protein. And as we age, our 